very good morning to all of our listeners. Welcome to today's episode of the Outfield Show Stream, where all the cricket is condensed in a podcast and brought to you. On today's episode of Friday Fact Check, we'll be looking at some interesting and fascinating facts from the world of cricket continued for the month of May. But if you enjoy listening to our show, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at the Outfield Show Stream and we are also on YouTube at the Outfield Show. You can also subscribe to our podcast channels on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Simply search for the Outfield Show Stream in your app search bar and you will find us. Subscribe to us, like and share and enjoy today's episode of Friday Fact Check. Let's start today's episode in the reverse order of dates. It's the 27th of May 1977 when Sri Lankan all-time great Mahela Jayawardene was born. He was a prolific and an elegant batter with a huge appetite for runs. He made his debut just at a nascent age of 20, coming to the crease at a unique position when Sri Lanka was 790 for 4 when they milked India for a total of 952 for 6 in Colombo in 1998. He made his first 8 centuries at home and in 2006 he became the second Sri Lankan after Sanat Jayasuriya to score a triple century in an epic third wicket partnership of 624 runs. with his buddy Kumar Sangakkara which is the highest for any wicket in tests as a captain he led sri lanka to test wins in england and new zealand and to the world cup final in 2007 in the 2011 world cup he became the sixth batter to score a 100 in the final but first to do so in the losing cause when india pipped sri lanka he became the first sri lankan to score 10000 test runs during the tour of south africa in 2011-12 at the end of this series he was reappointed as the captain jayawardene led sri lanka to the final of the 2012 world t20 where they were upstaged by the west indies things turned around 2 years later when sri lanka took the 2014 t20 world cup title and jayawardene retired from the format on a high he called it a day in all international cricket after the 2015 world cup on 27th of may in 1962 this was the day when the birth of indian all-rounder ravi shastri who is currently the coach of the indian cricket team he batted for 10 hours on his test best of 206 runs at the sydney cricket ground in 1991 in a match in which shane won on debut took one for 150 of batters who played 10 test innings against australia only eddie painter averages more than shastri's 77.75 Shastri started off as a lower order hitter but ended up as a defensive batter at the top of the order. He was useful one day player and he won the man of the series in the 1985 World Championship of Cricket in Australia. The same year he also equaled Gary Sober's record of 6 six sixes in an over in a Ranji Trophy game. Shastri played his last test just age 30 when when he went on to become a popular TV commentator. and also served as india's director of cricket in the mid 2010s only to come back in 2017 on 27th of may in 1975 another legend an underrated legend who goes by the name of mr cricket michael hussey got his meteoric rise early in his career in just 166 days he became the fastest player to score 1000 test runs and he scored 3 centuries in his first 5 tests and his average swelled to 86.18 at the end of 2 years his form dropped in 2008 2009 but he didn't lose his place despite tremendous pressure no australian batter performed better in pressure situations Hussey's unbeaten century in Sydney in 2010 against Pakistan helped Australia crawl back and win a test that most had written off. He was also the only Australian batter who had a good run in the 2010-11 Ashes where Australia miserably lost. An accumulator of runs in tests, Hussey also became a finisher 
in the limited overs format. Most memorably, he took Australia into the World T20 final in 2010 with an unbeaten 24 ball 60, coming in at number seven with a side needing 87 of 45 balls in the semi-final against Pakistan, where Australia beat Pakistan to reach the final, but only to lose to England in 2010. The 27th of May has a lot of cricketing weight attached to it because in 2012 after 4 years of underperformance and humiliation sagas Kolkata Knight Riders won their first IPL title by defeating Chennai Super Kings by 5 wickets Chennai Super Kings were regular finalists and they had won the tournament in the previous year in 2011 but it was Manvinder Bisla who was the star who opened in place of Brendan McCullum and added 136 runs with Jack Callis as Knight Riders chased 191. Bisla's 48 ball 89 was his only fourth half century in T20s. On the same day in 2018, chucked out of the IPL for two years because of the wrong doings of the franchise owner's son-in-law, Chennai Super Kings returned to win their third title by beating Sunrisers Hyderabad in the final in Mumbai. A target of 179 was challenging, but it was more challenging because of Sunrisers' formidable bowling attack. Into the fourth overs, Super Kings were 11 for zero, with Shane Watson on zero of 10 balls, and the Dad Zami joke was flying. But of the 47 other balls he faced, Watson made an unbeaten 117 and took Super Kings to an easy eight-wicket win with more than an over to spare. Just rewind to a day prior to May 27, because in May 26, 1999, Saurav Ganguly and Rahul Dravid added a monstrous 318 for the second wicket in Taunton as India dented all hopes for Sri Lanka in the World Cup. Ganguly creamed 183 runs of just 158 balls, and Dravid effectively partnered him with his 145 of 129. At that time, it was a one-day record for any wicket. But since then, it has been broken. On the 26th of May in 1988, mystery off spinner Sunil Narayan was born, and he turned into a deadly force, especially in white ball cricket. He tasted tremendous success in the 2011 Champions League with 10 wickets and an average of just 10.50. An injury to Kemar Roach meant Narayan was included for the third and final test against England in June 2012. He struggled to cement his spot in the longer version, managing only 21 wickets in six tests. In October 2014, while turning out for the Knight Riders in the Champions League T20, his action was reported twice, and he was banned from bowling in the final. He withdrew from the 2015 World Cup to work on his action and returned. Only to be suspended again in November that year. Narayan made a third comeback in the 2016 IPL. If he has trouble with his action again, Narayan has a backup career as a pinch hitting T20 batter. He was sent out to open the innings more than twice in the BBL in 2016-17, and he recorded the IPL's fastest 50 of 15 balls in the 2017 edition. From the back of match fixing and betting scandals, a 32 ball 60 from Karen Pollard on 26 May 2013 helped an aggressive show on the field by Mumbai Indians clinching their first IPL title in six attempts. They overcome regular and five-time finalist Chennai Super Kings in the final in Kolkata, bringing an end to the tournament of spot fixing and betting scandals. Moving on to the 25th of May 2007 when the first instance in tests of the top 4 scoring centuries in innings came forth strangely 
of the top four also coming close to breaking the record for the first wicket. Wasim Jafar and Dinesh Karthik added 175 on day one of the second test against Bangladesh in Dhaka before Dinesh Karthik retired hurt with cramps. Then at 281, still without the loss of a wicket, Jafar was also taken off with cramps, and Rahul Dravid and Sachin Tendulkar batted till stumps for 326 for zero. On day two, finally, Bangladesh got Dravid, and it was India's first wicket when they needed six runs to break the opening stand record of 413 set by Pankaj Roy and Vinu Mankad. Karthik returned to get his maiden century. The date May 24, but the year 2004. A perfect finish for Nasir Hussain at Lords in his first Test against New Zealand. On the final day, England were 35 for two, chasing 282 when Hussain, whose place was under scrutiny, came to the crease. He ran out Andrew Stroich to deprive him of twin hundreds on debut, but saw England pass the winning post. Hussain smashed consecutive fours. to bring up his 100 and then spanked the winning runs through covers as England made a daunting chase look easy two days later he announced his retirement from all forms of cricket on the 24th of may 2009 an ipl final in johannesburg between deccan chargers and royal challengers bangalore was played Herschel Gibbs made an unbeaten 53, but Anil Kumble took four for 16, including the wicket of Adam Gilchrist in the first over, to keep Deccan Chargers to a chaseable total of 143, a total which was three runs fewer than Bangalore had chased in an easy semi-final victory. However, Deccan returned to bowl with aggression and energy. Andrew Simons took two in two balls to go with his crucial 21 ball 33 earlier in the day. He clinched the title by six runs for Deccan Chargers. Another IPL final, the eighth this time. It was Mumbai Indians who crushed Chennai Super Kings. by handing them their fourth loss in six IPL finals by 41 runs to cruise their cruise to their second title that beat in the same opposition at the same venue in Eden Gardens to clinch their maiden title in 2013 this time around a couple of weeks into the tournament they looked like they would not get anywhere near the playoffs as they lost their first four matches and five of their first six thereafter They were beaten just once in ten games, and the rest is history. On to the last segment. On the twenty second of May in nineteen eighty seven, Pakistan wicketkeeper batsman Sarfaraz Ahmed, who was a part of the victorious two thousand and six under nineteen World Cup side in Bangladesh, was born. He got his first opportunity with the senior side in 2007. Competition from the Akmal brothers meant that he was in and out of the side. He didn't play a test for three years, and it was only in 2013 that he became a regular in the test and the ODI squads. He molded himself into an attacking batsman, earning a promotion in ODIs, where he even audaciously swept medium pacers for sixes. Three test centuries in 2014 against Sri Lanka, Australia, and New Zealand marked his second coming. Sarfaraz became Pakistan's captain in all formats in 2017, and that year led the team ranked eighth to a Champions Trophy win, defeating India. But it was not a long stint. He was sacked as the captain after the 2019 World Cup owing to poor performances of his batting form. and also the team and ultimately dropped from the test and the t20 sides as well the 22nd of may 2010 marks a t20 game which was played in florida in usa between new zealand and sri lanka 
The organizers must have hoped that the shortish format would prove attractive to the locals, but the low and slow pitch made it even a dull affair for die-hard cricket fans. They could not attract more crowds to that particular game because it was so one-sided and so unentertaining. New Zealand managed only 120 in their 20 overs and then they took 19.4 overs to dismiss Sri Lanka for 92. The second match which was played a day later had even lower scores as Sri Lanka lost 3 wickets in chasing New Zealand's total of a mere 81 runs. Well, a boring affair and we know why cricket wasn't adopted in the US. Thank you all for tuning in. We hope you found today's show interesting and if you did, do leave us a rating down below on our Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Let us know what else do you want to see in terms of cricketing content going forward. For updates and regular news about cricket, do follow us on Instagram at the Outfield Show Stream. Until then, have a great day ahead and see you tomorrow with an episode of Saturday News.